Hey everybody, Samantha Meningo here. So I don't normally do this kind of video blog thing, but I was sitting here tonight and I felt inspired to share a few thoughts that I was having. Um, I was thinking about the Kobe Bryant situation and just what this family must be going through and what they will go through in the weeks and months to come, having endured such a horrific loss. So you know, it got me really reflecting on trauma. Here they are going about their normal lives. And then all of a sudden, your world is just fundamentally like shook to its core and how that then affects you now. And of course, later on, it just so happens that I've been writing a lot lately about this topic of trauma. And what I'm realizing is more and more trauma is a part of our lives every single day in a way that we just don't even know is there so what do i mean now there's a lot of misinformation about what trauma is so right off the top we got to get this out of the way most people think of trauma as a reference to people who have experienced war or maybe horrible violent crime victims maybe um, just folks who've had just a horrific childhood abuse experience. And those things are what we call capital T traumas and are extremely valid. So that is trauma. But in a way, we all go through that. And so if you think about the definition of trauma a little differently as really when an experience we're having in the present gets crossed up with something that's happened in the past so that the thing we're going through now has a lot more of an emotional charge than we think it should. So let's say that in a very typical example that we normally would use with trauma, the most traditional type, you know, you might be someone who's coming back from war, you've been back a year or so, and you're with your family in a mall, walking through the mall. And all of a sudden, you know, you hear a really loud noise. And so your instinct in that moment, your body takes over and it just sort of drops you to the floor. Because in that moment, you have what's called a flashback back to this experience of, you know, being in a war situation and, you know, the explosions of bombs and gunfire or whatever. So again, it's like something is going on now that's pretty benign experience, just walking through the mall, but something gets activated based on the environment, your emotions, your thoughts, and your beliefs that kind of trips the, the wiring such that this time from the past gets confused with this experience you're in now. So having said that, I wanna just talk about a couple of things really quickly that are important when understanding trauma. So first, trauma is timeless. It has no regard for time or distance. So you could have experienced something, you know, 30 years ago and never have thought much about it, you know, have not really, like it's not something that comes up in your mind consciously. It's not something that, you know, has bothered you a lot in the past 30 years, but you're 60 years old and you find yourself suddenly feeling anxious every time you go to lock your front door. So that's never been an issue for you before. But all of a sudden you go to lock the door and you feel compelled to have to check the door to make sure it's locked a few times. That's weird, right? Why would that be happening suddenly? It doesn't make any sense to you because again, the second thing, the second factor about trauma that's really important to understand, it's not conscious. So trauma is not conscious. It's not something that we can access through our regular mind. It's something that's happening outside of our ability to see. So let's say that, you know, um, you're trying to get over this weird thing, this weird twitch you have all of a sudden about shutting the front door, locking your front door, have no idea what the hell that could possibly be about. And then 
you know, lo and behold, that might be connected to, you know, maybe an experience you had 30 years earlier on a subway during rush hour in the morning when you happened to bear witness to some type of violent crime. Maybe you saw somebody um, get almost get into uh, some kind of an altercation, but because it was all happening so quickly and you didn't have time to process it or even time to think about it, we're off to work as quickly as the event happened. It gets kind of cleared, you get off the subway, and then it's like, oh, I guess I gotta forget about that. Now it's time to go, you know, off to work to deal with whatever's going gonna happen there. So maybe for some reason it just gets kind of like dropped and never really readdressed. And for whatever reason does not come back until all this time later. So even though it doesn't make any sense to us why these two events got linked now, and even though it doesn't make any sense because it doesn't consciously feel like something that we're worried about or had that much concern over, doesn't mean shit. It can very much be an activator for later. So where I'm starting to see this in my clients, and this is the reason why it's coming up now. So as clients are getting older and as I'm starting to work with folks who are a little older, not, you know, not that much older, but is as people are getting older, so 40s and 50s and 60s, as we age, all of a sudden, these things that we never really had any kind of struggles with, um, stuff that just didn't seem like you know, it would ever catch up with us does. So that's the really important message here. You cannot outrun you because the truth is just because we didn't have a really strong emotional response at the time does not mean, in fact, in order for something to be traumatic later, often we didn't have a really strong emotional reaction at the time. So that's another critical variable. And the third, you know, kind of component of trauma, it's in the eye of the beholder. So just because something does not seem like it should have been traumatic, does not mean it isn't traumatic. So we don't get to look at somebody else's experience and say, oh, please, that's nothing. You shouldn't have any kind of, you know, strong emotion about that. It doesn't work that way. So that's kind of the hallmark of trauma. Feeling a lot of really intense emotion that doesn't seem to you to match what you're experiencing in the here and now. One last example. I was a few years back in a performance review with my employer at the time. And it was a perfectly reasonable review, pretty much standard operating procedure. They weren't, you know, scolding me. There was nothing bad going on. Yet at that time, I could feel my heart racing out of my chest. I felt like I was kind of a little kid again, and I wanted to cry even though there was no reason to feel that way at all. So I didn't stop at the time and go, oh my God, I'm traumatized because that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there are things that happen throughout each and every day, situations just like that, little things. You may not think much about it because it doesn't make sense. So you just kind of chalk it up to like, oh, I'm having a bad day, whatever it is. But the point that I want to make clear, as you get older, these things get bigger. So whatever you don't deal with, whatever you, whatever emotions or difficult experiences that you think you're just going to outrun, I'm here to tell you that's impossible. As we get older, those things start to really pick up momentum and become much bigger and much stronger. Uh, until we really stop and take a look at them. The point of all this, learning how to handle your emotions in a healthy and positive way is really important, obviously. But as we get older, it's not just important, it's critical. 
you see the mind and body is one system, two sides of the same coin. And if you don't deal with your unresolved emotional things, the thoughts and emotions that are physical living in the body, what will happen is you'll start to be forced to pay closer attention. In other words, the body can start to break down. Uh, your emotions can go completely haywire. So it's really important that you start to learn, if you haven't already, how to handle difficult emotions and how to handle yourself.